bevo.com. So talking about the CEOs, I mean, you, you've obviously um, identified, you have to identify great management teams. So what do you look for in a great CEO? As rounded a skill base as I can get. In the turnaround world, I look for something different though than the generality of private equity. Um, in the turnaround world, you don't need slow, considered human beings. You'd prefer to see people who take a lot of action. Mm. Excessive, if anything, bias towards doing things. Right. So you want somebody who's possibly quite turbulent, probably not too fussed about being loved by the people around him. Mm. Um, and he may be completely unsuited to running the business 18 months later when it gets down to how do we hold this thing together in detail, make small incremental change. But we're looking for people who are intelligent, analytical, decisive, confident. Um, they've got to be able to carry people with them, but they're going to be able to pull them along in a way you don't in a stable, well-run business. Yeah. So different sort of characteristics. We need them to take actions. 100% of the 100% actions taken and 85% of them right in turnaround is really what you want. Not the we've done 50% of the actions and we got them 100% right. And moving away from sort of a turnaround CEO as a sort of CEO of a company that's 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 nurturing, what would you say? Uh, a lot of those attributes still applicable, or is there a lot are there? Decisiveness can be a little a notch or two down. Okay. Um, yeah. The ability to pull a team along with you becomes more important as companies become stable. Mm. Um, those are the real changes. I always find it incredibly hard to pick the good from the excellent. Yeah. Um, you only find that out some months into a relationship with a CEO. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the reasons I do turnaround, because spotting bad is much easier. They don't know the numbers, they don't visit the sites, they haven't met their customers. Uh, yeah, they're very easy to spot. Yeah. Um, but the guy who does a reasonable job as opposed to an excellent job, that's often very hard to pick apart quickly. Yeah, the grey is always harder to see sometimes, isn't it? Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, what would you say is the best piece of business? There's two things I want to ask you now. Sort of, what's the best piece of business advice? And, and you yourself are a, a leader with a great following, not just Ooh. in your own company, but out there in the marketplace as well. So you've created willing followers. from the, So from the... Uh, business perspective, first of all, is there any great piece of business advice that you've, you've received in your, in your time so far? There's no single nugget that dominates my days. No. Um, I wish there was. It would be <laughs> a lot right. easier to remember that all the multitude of things you do need to do. <laughs> That's right. Just one um, mantra would be great. I suppose if I had one thing that I would say to anybody, uh, anybody who doesn't follow the numbers in their business, uh, it always fails. Yeah. That's about the one really sort of certain piece of advice. Uh, you can put it in a slightly more humorous way by saying, I've never had a company fail th through having too good financial control. Uh, and I've rather a lot of experience to the contrary. Uh, that is a good piece of business advice. On, on leadership, John, you've, you're, uh, you've got a lot of those attributes you mentioned, but any, any piece of leadership advice or anything that stands out? I think little more than... Uh, you have to set objectives in this life. Um, and winning isn't necessarily the objective. For most human beings, it's about being happy with themselves. Um, so if, they, if leading makes them happy, they should do it. But if it doesn't, they shouldn't. So the, the idea that you can give people that will convert them into good leaders, I think is often wrong. People are, tend to be born or developed into leaders, um, mm. and they have to be happy being leaders. Many people are happy followers. Mm. And you mentioned as well, I think, that in, in the last interview you said that you've got a, one of the benefits of loving what you do is that the working hard comes naturally because you're loving what you yeah. do. You love yeah, to I, mean, I really I have absolutely no difficulty in knocking out 15 hours in a day uh, when I'm enjoying myself, oh. which is most days. It's a fantastic position to be in. What are some of the things? You, what are some of the days that you don't enjoy so much? Is there any? Uh, I have limited tolerance for uh, lengthy ex lengthy exposure to bureaucrats, <laughs> um, people with unclear objectives. Um, I tire of journalists after the first hour, typically. Um, 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> better be, better be finishing my hair. <laughs> um, seriously, the things I don't enjoy are the more tedious and pointless. I have absolutely no tolerance for a pointless meeting. No. I'm out yeah. in five minutes. Yeah. But the good presented bad managers, that's another one up there. Well, they can actually be quite enjoyable because, of course, <laughs> as you puncture Just balloons, they do tend to go pop, and that can be amusing to watch. <laughs> Uh, next time you've got one, can you invite me around? Oh, I'd, I'd love to see that. Last question, John. You've, you've got some uh, fantastic people already working mm. for you at Better Capital. How, uh, what, what advice do you have on just getting a, a brilliant team together working for you? I'm not um, a very systematic hirer of people. Um, I typically hire people I like, get on with. Um, I normally uh, form a view on somebody within 20 minutes. This can, of course, be a gross error. Um, but I, if I don't like them in 20 minutes, I never hire them and never go forward with them. Uh, I admire people who are going to try hard. I admire people who push their own capabilities to the limit. Mm. Um, I've no time for dishonesty. Um, I've enormous time for people who are honest triers, even if they don't prosper. And I will endeavor to keep those kind of people in my organization doing something that's appropriate to their skill base. Mm. Um, how do I select the very best? The best are when I take wild hiring decisions. <laughs> and a reasonable proportion of them work out. Really? I've worked with some excellent people over the years, and some of those would not have fitted any reasonable HR department's view of what I should have hired. Interesting. So the checkbox behavioral competency thing goes out the window to some extent. If you want to get the best, it probably does go out the window. Yeah. Most really good people are actually quite unbalanced. <laughs>